we just got some results in the last week from a NASA study that studied Mars quakes to figure out what's on the inside of Mars. So super relevant to what we've been talking about. It's a partnership between two universities in Zurich, ETH Zurich and University of Zurich with NASA to help understand Mars, what layers it has, how is it creative, how was it created, what does it look like on the inside by studying Mars quakes. So they used data from NASA's InSight lander seismometer, and it collected data on over a thousand different Mars quakes. And so all that data was shipped from NASA over to Zurich, where these universities are partnering to study the data. And actually, the connection there is one of the professors at ETH Zurich was the part of the team at NASA that developed the seismometer on the InSight lander. So all these connections got this data shipped from NASA that was up on Mars over to Zurich, Switzerland, where they're studying this and trying to figure out what's going on. What's, what can these Mars quakes tell us about the inside of the planet? Wait, so quick question. Uh, says seismometer. Uh, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Is, is that uh, an equipment that uh, records the vibrations that are happening on the surface of a planet? Exactly. So like when you watch a movie, maybe about an earthquake or something, and you see these little like lines drawing on paper, the different tremors on oh, the yeah, earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, a seismometer. Yeah, yeah. So it's just, gotcha. it maps the vibrations and the waves that are occurring at different locations on the surface. And so we call them earthquakes on earth, but on Mars, those are called Mars quakes and the seismometer measures Mars quakes. So got it. It's already been well known for a while that you can calculate how far the seismometer was from the epicenter of an earthquake or a Mars quake. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they used that knowledge to filter out and only from those 1,000 Mars quakes that were studied by the InSight lander, they only looked at ones that were far away. And you might why? wonder why. And it's because I, I you, you don't want to care about the waves that have gone around the surface of Mars because that doesn't tell you anything about the inside of it. You want to go to the Mars quakes that were far away because those waves actually were transmitted through Mars, uh, you know, giving you a cross section, an idea of what the inside of Mars looks like without having to cut it open or dig a giant hole. So do, do the waves going through Mars, um, th does the vibration change based on the material that it's going through? That's what they're looking for. I'm assuming, exactly. Right? Yeah. So different speeds okay. of these waves traveling through can tell you, tell you about the chemical and thermal composition and maybe any discontinuities. So say there's, you know, a solid layer and then a liquid layer that where that discontinuity exists between the two layers, it will slow down the waves. Basically, it, looking at the speed of the waves gives them a picture of what's on the inside of Mars. Dude, this, this kind of reminds me of uh, the, the Michael Freilich satellite that we talked about. I think it was like episode four. Yeah, episode four. Like six months ago now. Uh, it, it's, it's a satellite where it could communicate with different satellites and they could send a signal and the signal would go through the atmosphere. And depending of, on, on the condition of the atmosphere, um, the, the wave would change. It, it would get refactored. And the satellite would uh, do some computation to determine the, uh, the weather data from that. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing here. They're looking at the different phase shifts in the waves, and they're using that to calculate what different elements and what state they are inside of Mars's crust. So that's super interesting. And so Absolutely. I sit here and go, so what? So they figured it out. What's on the inside? Just spit it out. What are the results? So yeah, what's on the inside? <laughs> at, at first glance, if you crack open Mars, it would have a distinct crust and a mantle and a core, basically like very, very similar to Earth. Yeah. So if you cut right. them, cut them apart and color coded, these are the different layers. You would say, oh, that looks like pretty much exactly the same. But right. when they did more studying, they found out some nuanced differences that will tell us a little bit more about the origins of Mars and Earth, which are pretty interesting to me. So... For one, Earth has seven different tectonic plates that the continents exist on. So those are giant parts of the crust that move around slowly. And that's like sometimes if you look at renderings of what old Earth looked like, it had a big Pangea, Pangea a giant, you know, giant water mass and a giant land mass. And then those tectonic yeah, yeah, yeah. plates have shifted to make the continents as we know them today. Well, on Mars, there's no tectonic plates. It's just one solid plate for the entire crust. And it's actually much thicker than the Earth's crust is. So that's that's pretty interesting there. Wait, that's crazy. The mantle. That's so cool. The mantle on Mars is kind of, you know, a mix of solid and liquid kind of uh, viscous material like lava, just like on Earth. But there's a difference on Mars is the core on Earth is solid nickel, solid nickel and iron. But in Mars, the core right. is liquid. So there's like some slight differences between Mars and Earth. The general structure is the same, but that's something we kind of expected because they're near each other in the solar system. Mars and Earth are right next to each other. We're neighbors. But because they come from different minerals and, you know, the way that these 
these these different layers are structured differently. Some of them are liquid when they're solid on Earth. They basically can tell that Mars isn't from the same origin body as Earth, which is a pretty interesting, you know, proposal that people have had for a long time. But it's another piece of evidence that, uh, you know, goes to support that theory, which is Mars and Earth didn't come from the same piece of mass, you know, way back millions and millions of years ago, the way that we think that Earth and the moon came from the same piece of mass, what they call proto-Earth. So, uh, you know, pretty interesting understanding. Now we know what's on the inside of Mars, and we have more data to propose, like, towards certain theories that we have that, you know, it's structured similarly to Earth, but it's not from the same body as Earth. It's a really interesting understanding that I think all of that can come just from studying earthquakes on the surface, or Mars quakes. Mars quakes, there you go. Yeah, yeah that, that's absolutely uh, fascinating to me. And... I, I didn't even know people used to think that Mars and the Earth came from the same body. But now I'm wondering what body did it come from if, if it wasn't the same thing, given we that they know. were formulated around the same time. That's, that's super cool. That's so fascinating. Also, the fact that the, like, the crust is just one single piece, that is uh, kind of confusing to me because I, I thought like earthquakes were caused by tectonic plates like rubbing against each other. Well, uh, that maybe explains my why there's a lot shot. less Mars quakes than earthquakes and they're of much lower magnitude so it took a while for this insight lander to collect as much data as it did because there isn't so much tectonic shift like you're talking about impressive nonetheless 